we translate to mean peace. But shalom actually means nothing is broken and nothing is missing. I want all over this sanctuary for that word to reverberate. Would you declare out loud shalom? shalom. That means nothing is broken and nothing is missing. I just spoke that word over your life because I declare and decree that your family will not be broken. Your peace will not be broken. For 500 of you who won't shout, this year your heart will not be broken. Countries with the lowest rates of dairy and calcium consumption, like areas in Africa, have the lowest rate of osteoporosis. In our community, one in two women over 50 have to deal with some varying degree of osteoporosis. I want to ask our super bad sisters who are over 50, would you raise up that hand, please? I speak over your life that nothing will be fractured in your body. I speak over our sisters, our mothers, our aunts, our grandmothers. I hope you'll shout about it. No hip replacement, no knee replacement, no arthritis. I can't hear nobody. No trouble in your joints, no limitation to your mobility and your flexibility. All of those of you that believe it, come on, let me hear the sisters give God glory. Calcium is vitamin dome because it does not reduce fractures. Number two, I want you to write this down, please. Number two, uh, calcium milk does not combat cancer. It does not combat cancer. Research shows that with a higher level of intake of dairy products may increase a man's risk of prostate cancer by 30 to 50 percent. Let me back that up. Men who are consuming dairy products have greater, greater access or exposure to prostate or pancreatic cancer by 30 to 50 percent. Dairy consumption increases the body level of insulin like growth of IGF-1, which is a cancer promoter. It raises prostate and pancreatic cancer by 30 to 50 percent. We all learned on the news a few weeks ago that Congressman John Lewis is in the fight of his life. Our church knows firsthand what is the impact as cancer took its toll on our late beloved apostle Bishop Long. And so I came today on behalf of every warring cherubim to declare war on pancreatic and prostate cancer on black men in our community. I want every black man over 50 to stand. Every black man over 50 to stand. Every black man over 50 to stand. I declare and decree that every man, father, husband, brother, who is standing and can hear my voice will not have to contend with prostate and pancreatic cancer. Every cancer cell is now reversing itself. And those of you who have God-like faith, I dare you to charge the atmosphere over our husbands, our sons, our brothers. I can't hear anybody. I declare, black man, you shall not die, but you shall live to see the salvation of the Lord. Sisters, y'all got to help me right here. Open up your mouth and declare it to be so. Hallelujah. You may be seated. 
every sister who's dealing with osteoporosis, every brother who is dealing uh, with any form of prostate or pancreatic cancer at a high risk, even while I'm preaching, I want you to just come touch this altar as a sign of agreement that healing is coming to your body before this year is over. I got too many spectators. I just need intercessors right through here. I said, I'm waiting on intercessors to show up for healing to happen in this room, for healing to happen in this house, for healing to take place. I'm going to give you even while they're coming. Hallelujah. You don't even know why they're coming. Their funeral just got canceled. They are in the sanctuary because God ain't going to let them go to the mortuary. I need God to give God glory like you know that he's able to do it. I want to give you alternative forms, alternative, alternative sources of calcium. Alternative sources of calcium. I want you to write these down, please. Alternative sources of calcium. It's almond milk. Some of y'all are going to like it. Collard greens. Kale. Salmon. Sardines. Beans. Greens. You name it. <laughs> Number one, it does not reduce fractures. Number two, it does not combat cancer. Number three, it doesn't sit well. It doesn't sit well. 75% of the world's population, 75% of the world's population is genetically unable to digest milk. Did y'all hear what I just said? 75% of the world's population is unable to digest milk because it is full of saturated fat that is linked to heart disease. So a lot of us feel ill at ease after consuming milk and yet we force it down. Why? Because everybody else is doing it. God told me to tell just those of you who have an ear inclined to the Holy Spirit that this year he is tired of watching you force it. If it is not a natural fit, walk away. I'm tired of you trying to make stuff work that I never intended for you to have. You are too far along to have to train somebody how to love you. God, I can't hear nobody. You are tired of lowering your standards just because you want company and because you're trying to fit in. God said, I called you out. You were never supposed to fit in. Do not get discouraged when folk don't like you. They're not supposed to. You are not of this world. There is something different that he has placed on your life. Look at your neighbor and tell him, I'm tired of forcing it. Now there are those of you who are unnerved by this proposition that I would ask the church not only that we would take a plant-based way of living but now I'm telling you don't drink milk. I got some church people sitting around here whose feathers are ruffled saying, Pastor, how can you stand from the sacred desk and say not to drink milk when in Exodus 3 and 8 it declares that the children of Israel will be going to a land flowing with milk and honey. <laughs> when my grandmother in my old church said when she got to heaven, that's all there was going to be was milk and honey. You have to understand that the writer in Exodus was speaking metaphorically in contrast to the affliction that oppressed people had endured under the hands of the Egyptians. It is utilizing the term in language arts that is a figure of speech known as syncdike. Syncdike is understanding the part is representing the whole. The part is representing the whole. For example, 
I believed that up until yesterday that Baltimore was going to win it all. <laughs> that's that's sink decay. That's it's, it's the park, but it's representing the whole. I, I, I was talking about the Ravens, but I embraced it for the whole city. That, that, that's sink decay. So uh, when, when it is that you are speaking for one sector, but you really talking about everything that is included to it, it encompasses it all. So uh, what God is saying is new birth is getting ready to win it all. Some of y'all ain't shouting because you think I'm talking about the building. I'm talking about the people that are in the building. That no matter where you go this week, you're going to win it all. Look, look at your neighbor. Tell them you done had enough losses in this season of your life. You get ready to win it all. And so in Exodus chapter 3. When he says that you're going to have a land flowing in milk and honey, the honey is put for whatever is sweet to take the bitterness out of the mouth of those who have had a bad experience. I done gone too deep. Let me come up for air. He says, I'm giving you honey because you have had enough stuff to make you bitter. But I am not going to allow the situations and the circumstances of your life to make you bitter. As a matter of fact, you're going to smile in atmospheres you should have cried in. And folk who don't know your testimony don't know how it is that you still got a smile on your face. And you got to tell them, I sing because I'm happy. I, I sing because I'm free. Here's I is on the sparrow so the honey was the chase was to change the taste in your mouth I got to make a declaration just for those of you all who are inclined for something different God told me to tell you brace yourself because this year your taste is about to change the stuff that used to excite you ain't even going to phase you no more. The stuff you thought you couldn't even live without now. You ain't even hard pressed to have it. Why? Because your taste has changed. says, I'm giving you honey to stop you from bitterness. And because I'm getting ready to change your taste. But he said, watch this, Jamal. Tell them in Exodus chapter 3 is that the milk I'm referring to denotes fertility. It denotes fertility in a land of people who have not been nourished right. Hallelujah. God says, I'm giving me give strength for what it is that you need. Uh, because people who had access to you didn't know how to handle you. And because they didn't know how to handle you, I don't want you to reduce your expectation of how you ought to be treated. See, people who don't understand the call on your life think your demand list is too long. They don't understand how valuable I am. I, I'm not for everybody. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Everybody don't get me. Everybody ain't gonna flow with me. Everybody can't connect with me. But this is my fertile season. And because this is my fertile season, this is the season where I am getting ready to produce at record-breaking numbers. Hallelujah. Did you hear what I just said? Your season of being sterile is over. The season of you working and not having anything to show for it has come to an end. And because you are fertile, hear me, be careful who you let touch you. Because I don't want just anybody connecting with the seed that I carry. This is my birthing season. This is uh, so milk. Be seated. I'm, I'm, I'm just lecturing. I'll be preaching in a minute. Uh, milk, hear me, uh, does not do the body good. Milk does not do the body good. I need you to look at the person beside you and tell them, I know you heard different. But God wants you to know 
My pastor wants you to know milk does not do the body good. So if you know all of that, if you know all of that, hear me, you are now accountable for the information you have. You didn't know better, you couldn't do better. But now that you know, act like you know. As a consequence, I got to ask you this question. How do you give milk to somebody you care about? Skin ready to get tight now. The Israelites are going through their dysfunctional cycle with God where one minute they adore him and the next minute they're disobedient. To chastise them, he gave them an ill-fitted leader. He gave them a different kind of leader. Watch this, because all of the chapters from Genesis to Judges chapter 3, God kept raising up male leaders. And the male leaders kept dropping the ball. So God says, I got to switch this thing around and I need to raise up a super bad system. I'm going to raise up a woman by the name of Deborah to show men how they're supposed to lead. Y'all, please, I'm telling y'all, buckle up. It's getting ready to get tight in here. Brothers, if you can't handle a strong sister, new birth ain't your church. There's some women in here that's anointed for leadership. There, that there's some women in here that know they are called to give direction and order and instruction. It's more to you than being some secretary. You are CEO. You are anointed for leadership. It says I'm, I'm, I'm anointing a woman by the name of Deborah. And Deborah is getting ready to change the game. Says, Deborah, this is what I'm going to do for you, but not only am I going to do it for you, here it is, I'm going to do it for the people who don't mind worshiping me publicly in new birth. Here's what the Lord said. I'm reading it and I'm giving it to you. He said, Deborah, I am getting ready to anoint your strategy. I'm waiting for y'all to get off the little bus. Here it is. He says, I am anointing you to bless your strategy. So here it is. This is for mature people. Whatever strategy or concept. You've been working on in your mind. God said while you were in church, I was blowing on it. While it is that you are here, I'm opening up the files in your laptop. I'm dealing with your notes in your phone. Whatever strategy you got, I'm getting ready to bless it so you can have victory. Says, I'm getting ready to bless your strategy. I need you to look at Judges chapter 4. Judges chapter 4, look at verse number 14. Judges chapter 4, verse number 14. Watch what the Lord says. The Lord says, today I am putting victory in your hands. Deborah hadn't even executed the strategy yet. But she said, whatever it is you've been working on, Today, I have just sealed it. That if you go after it, you are going to accomplish it. I don't know how y'all feel about it, but here it is. Don't wait till the battle is over. But you ought to shout right now like the victory is in your hands. First Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse number 6. It says, some planted, others watered, but God gave the increase. <laughs> Hallelujah. Here's what it says, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse number 6. Some planted, others watered, but God gave the increase. I need you to lay your hands on yourself and tell them I am a planner. Look at the person next to you. Tell them I just need you to water it. And watch God increase it. Now, no. 
Deborah, hear this, Deborah has the strategy. Deborah has the strategy. But the Lord raised up a brother by the name of Barak. Y'all gonna get it in just one minute. Deborah had the strategy, but he had to raise up a brother by the name of Barak. His job, watch this, was to run the enemies to her. See, when, when you got an anointed woman with a plan and with a gift, and you connect her to a man that ain't threatened and jealous and insecure and will help her get to her victory, there is nothing she will not be able to accomplish. We got to stop fighting each other and start fighting for our victory. God said it's getting ready to happen. De Deborah's got the strategy. Barak has got the warfare. He says to Deborah, watch this, I am getting ready to fight for your strategy. I'm getting ready to fight for your plan. Why? Because I want to see you win. Hallelujah. I, I need you to look at the person beside you and tell them you fought enough in 2019. Come on, look at them and tell them you can sit this one out. When I shout this next time, it ain't for me. I'm shouting for what you working on. I can't hear nobody. I'm, I'm shouting for your dream. I'm, I'm shouting for your business. I'm, I'm shouting for your marriage. I'm, I'm shouting for your health. You ain't got to do nothing. I'm getting ready to fight for this. Says I'm gone. I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight Deborah so you can execute your strategy. Cicero was one of the leaders of the opposition and he's running by foot away from Barak and he slips into a tent that's occupied by another sister. God help me. I'm I'm telling y'all, if we can get sisters to start working with each other and stop hating on each other. God, I can't hear nobody. Stop being jealous. It ain't her fault she's cute. It ain't her fault she got that much anointing. It ain't that fault she's still working out every day. It ain't her fault. I need every sister to give another sister a high five and say, girl, I ain't jealous of you. I'm fighting for what you fighting for. I want to see you win. I want to see you get to your next level. I want to see you as more than a conqueror. So Sarah is running from Barak. He's running from Barak and uh, he slips into the tent of an anointed woman and thought he could hide in her tent. God, I can't hear nobody. I came to tell the devil, his imps, every witch, every warlock, hear me, you picked the wrong house. That when I shout today, I'm getting every devil out of my house. I'm getting every spirit out of my house. I'm getting every negative principality out of my house. Says I slipped into her house thinking he was going to hide in her house but didn't know this was the house of an anointed woman. That this was the house of a praying woman. I need you to grab your neighbor by the hand real quick and tell him as for me and my house. Come on, say it with authority. As for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. No negative energy in my house. No disrespect in my house. No abuse in my house. God got a power. Your house is anointed. I just said something. Your house is anointed. 
I'm waiting for you to receive it. Your house is anointed. Your house is where God lives. If you believe it, watch this. I need you to speak your address out loud. I said speak your address out loud. God is now sending angels to cover your house. The spirit of the living God is in your house. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in my house. Session. Slips into Jael's tent. Thinks he can hide in her house. And says, if anybody asks you, if I'm in here, don't tell them. He then said, he then said to this woman, not knowing that she goes to new birth. <laughs> not knowing she got a prayer life. He, he says to this woman, will you give me water? Because I'm exhausted. I'm going to pull it together. She, she heard what he said, but she knew he was an enemy. He asked for water because he wanted to be replenished. He wanted to be restored. And instead of giving him water, y'all ain't going to believe it, she gave him milk. God, I can't hear nobody in here. She gave him milk. Why? Because she said, as of this day, my enemies are going down. I can't hear nobody. You ought to be crying out, God. Why? Because whoever spoke negatively against your destiny and against your assignment, they're going down. He said, give me water. And instead of water, she gave him milk because she wanted her enemies to become fractured. God, I can't hear no money. She, she wanted her enemies to become cancerous. She wanted her enemies to not have any strength. So she poured him milk. That is the response of what happens when your enemies make requests. He asked for water and got milk. But that don't apply to you. Because he said, if you ask for anything in my name, it shall be given to you. I want you to know why the church is quiet. The church is quiet because you're sitting around folk who haven't asked God for nothing. But if you've been asking God for something specific, and you expect God to deliver it. I need you to open up your mouth and magnify him like it's gotta happen. It's, it's gotta be. She gave him milk. And sure enough, his body responded. His body responded. And um he became sluggish. His body responded and engulfed fatigue. His body responded and he is absent of zeal and energy. And he went to sleep. There are some sleeping demons who have gotten too comfortable in your house. Oh God, I can't hear nobody that has gotten too comfortable in your life, got too comfortable harassing your children. But God said, today we wake them up to kill them. I can't hear nobody in here. I said, I'm waking these demons up to get them out of your house. We got to get out of here. Would you grab that neighbor by the hand and tell them the devil wanted you to be quiet today? The devil didn't want you to holler today. The devil was hoping you would be soft-spoken today. But in the words of my grandmother, Satan, we gonna tear your kingdom down. Satan, we gonna tear your kingdom down. I need you to open up your mouth. I need you to shout out loud like you 
killing the demon. Kill the demon of depression. Kill the demon of low self-esteem. Kill the demon. Time is almost up. I need somebody's hand in your hand. Oh my God. Somebody's hand is in your hand. Whatever is the unaddressed stuff in your life, God said, You ain't sweeping it under the rug no more. I'm getting ready to kill it today. God, I wish I was at new birth. Whatever, whatever's the stuff that makes you feel uncomfortable, I'm gonna kill it today. Whatever it is, it's hard for you to talk about. I'm gonna kill it today. Jael said, I gotta kill this demon. I gotta kill this demon. I need you to hear me. Because this demon is trying to mess up Deborah's plan. He ain't even done nothing to me. But I got to kill him, why? Because this demon is after my girlfriend. God, y'all are missing it. Says, I'm going I'm to wipe him out. So my sister girl ain't going to have to deal with it. I'm waiting for y'all to show up, y'all. Y'all are quiet because you're selfish. You get ready to give God glory. Watch this. You get ready to go into spiritual warfare, but it is not for you. You get ready to scream for whose hand you're holding. That whatever demons they got is getting ready to be destroyed. What, whatever they dealing with is getting ready to be annihilated. I tell you to cry out for them. Come on, open up your mouth. That alcohol demon has got to die. That pornography demon has got to die. That anger issue has got to die. That perverted spirit has got to die. She got a stake, got a hammer. And drove it through Cicera's head. I'm almost finished. I speak over every lifted hand that while you sleep tonight, God is gonna mess with the mind of your enemy. While you rest tonight, he's going to get in the head of the people who had plans to sabotage your success. While you rolling over tonight, God is going to change the mind of somebody of influence's opinion about you. They're going to wake up tomorrow thinking about you and not know why. Why? Because God just got in their head. And I believe by faith. 
that God has given me to give strength to every lifted hand that no bone in your body will be fractured. I speak to every lifted hand. No cancer cell will be detected. I speak over every lifted hand that every man in your family will be free of prostate and pancreatic cancer. I speak over every lifted hand that every maternal figure in your family will be absent of osteoporosis. And those of you who come in agreement with your pastor, here it is, that your enemies are now your footstools. Would you give God praise for it right now, your, your enemies? I want you to hug two people real quick and tell them you're stronger now. You're stronger now. You're stronger now. I want you standing. I want you standing. I want to seamlessly open the doors of this church. It is. I want to open the doors of the church. I want somebody to join New Birth. As a matter of fact, I want a bunch of you too. It's a holistic ministry. Dealing with every area of your life. If you're here in this room and you're saying, Pastor, this is the kind of church I need to be a part of. Where I'm not. You don't know how to take me or to receive me. But what you don't understand is that who I am is not contingent on your validation or your cosign. If you leave me, I'll still be me. Talk about me, I'll still be me. Let me lose my job, I'll still be fly. Because there is something about me that you will not understand on the layer. You gotta go deep sea scuba diving to understand the merit of who I am. I know it's a lengthy parcel of scripture, but it encompasses the full context of what I want to share with you on today. Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 20. Liturgical dancers, you were phenomenal today. Thank you so very much. <laughs> Music ministry, minstrels, I appreciate you. Matthew 16, verses 13 through 20. Would you read silently as I read aloud? When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah the son of the living God. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my father in heaven. Look at verse 18. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Verse 19, I'll give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven, Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose in earth will be loosed in heaven. Verse 20, then he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. You may be seated in the presence of our God. Jesus asked the disciples, who do people say that I am? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah. Jesus said, forget about all of them. Y'all roll with me. What do you think I am? And only Simon Peter answered. He said, you are the Messiah. 
the son of the living God. I want to preach for a little while today using as a subject, I wish you really knew me. I wish you really knew me. Would you look at the person beside you and tell them, I wish people really understood me. I wish you really knew me. I want to share a true story that didn't take place outside of an H&M department store, but it happened in the heart of Spain. Police were alerted about a gorilla who somehow had gotten loose outside of Laurel Park Zoo. Investigators immediately dispatched a veterinarian who was armed with a tranquilizer to subdue the beast before he could exact damage on the community and fear on that city. The act of bravery very soon turned into buffoonery when it was discovered that it was actually a human in a gorilla suit. The truth of the matter is the zoo was running a gorilla escape drill. And one of the workers was clad in the costume to test capture and recovery time. Spinning out of control, the zoo and the police department came into collusion and conveyed to the press that it was simply a case of mistaken identity. While the Constitution affords us the right to bear arms, many of us are grateful we didn't have access to a loaded weapon when it was unveiled that some of our characters from our past were dressed up like people. When they are really wild animals. Maya Angelou famously said, when people show you who they are, you should believe them. Chris Rock in one of his early comedy sketches said when you first meet somebody, they send their representatives. And it's not until much later that you happen upon who they actually are. In this culture, it becomes tremendously difficult to know the essence of people's identity because everyone seems to be auditioning to be a model on Instagram even when there's no runway. A reality star on Snapchat when there are no cameras or contracts. My old friend Tupac Shakur got engrossed in being bishop on Jews that he sometimes forgot he was a revolutionary poet. People become enamored by your shell that they never get exposed to your soul. And yet there's a cry from your inner being that's whimpering without the benefit of a microphone. I wish somebody really knew me. I wish somebody really understood me. I wish somebody got me. You remember when Jesus was 12 and attended the temple with his parents and was lost in discussion with the chief priest that his father caught up with him. He shook him, but Jesus watched his head to remind him that he was about his father's business. Folk don't understand, you don't get, they don't understand why you work so hard. They don't understand why you stay up so late. They can't figure out why you sacrifice so much. They are at loss as to how it is that you live on so little. They can't figure out how you keep to yourself because they just don't understand you. 
What many miss is that understanding. I want you to write this down. It's going to mess you up. It's going to blow your mind. And you're going to have to talk about it on Valentine's Day. I want you to have this. I'm t I promise you, you'll thank me later. Understanding. Would you write this down? Understanding is more important than love. Did y'all hear what I just said? Understanding is more important than than love. Understanding takes more work than falling in love. Understanding is what leads to genuine love. Love without understanding cannot last. Love without understanding is like having a beautiful sports car but not having the keys. If you understand me, then it won't be difficult for you to love me. God, you didn't hear what I just said. The people who don't love you don't understand you. I see you, you feel me, you're around me, but do you know me? No adult has ever looked back on their childhood. Not one adult has ever looked back on their childhood and complained, my parents understood me too much. Not one. Nobody has ever left divorce court telling the judge, I need to get out because they understand me so much. Conversely, many children never, never underestimate their parents, watch this, understanding, and it is woefully, bitterly unfortunate, and I've seen it as a pastor, how many children don't understand their parents' understanding of them until their parents are on a deathbed, until their parents are battling a terminal ill. I want to say to you that is unconventional even in church, but I, I'll take that risk. Love alone is not enough. I'm trying, sir. Love alone is not enough. If you profess to love me, but you don't understand me, you just like me a lot. And it will not, in fact, be able to be sustained because while that may be sufficient for you, it will not be adequate for me. The more that I am in love with you, it is the more that I understand you. That's why it's easy, please hear me very carefully, it's easy for people who don't know you not to like you. So most of the people who claim they don't like you really don't know you. So they don't like what they've heard about you or what they've assumed about you. And then when they get to know you, they have to apologize because it then goes against everything that they thought because you hated a figment of your own imagination. And so to love me, understand this, that I am complex. And because I am complex, small-minded people will be easily frustrated. So for people, watch this, who really do not have intelligence and creativity and depth, they will dismiss you as being too much. God, I can't hear anybody, but somebody who is plugged into you will understand you're just enough. So you have to stop apologizing to people who have become intimate strangers and cloak themselves as friends because it is their loss that they really don't know what a genuine, authentic person looks like. And so because I really love you, you don't even know that what I'm saying to you was never to offend you, but I love you enough to tell you you shouldn't have that on. 
I can't hear nobody. I'm your real friend. And because I'm your real friend, I'm not going to play games with you. And I'm going to tell you, you playing yourself. And that ain't going nowhere. I can't hear nobody. And so I don't mean to be cold or callous. My only problem is I'm honest. And you like liars. I can't hear nobody. And so because it is that I operate at a different standard, you don't know how to take me or to receive me. But what you don't understand understand is that who I am is not contingent on your validation or your cosign. If you leave me, I'll still be me. Talk about me, I'll still be me. Let me lose my job, I'll still be fly. Because there is something about me that you will not understand on the layer. You got to go deep sea scuba diving to understand the merit of who I am. Far too many failed relationships and friendships failed because they assumed, I want you to write this down, get ready to mess you up, I promise you. Uh, so many relationships failed because the other person assumed they grew apart. Or they felt like they became different people. If the truth be told, they relied too much on the love they had that they did not have the room for the love for who you were becoming. <laughs> so you did not run out of love, you ran out of understanding. So you love me, y'all ain't gonna like this, you love me naive. <laughs> you love me weak, you love me broken, but when I get the strength enough to love myself, then it's too much, I can't hear nobody in here. But if you love me, you shouldn't want to see me in a weakened state. And you ought to be able to celebrate the strides that I made to become who it is that God is fashioning to me. And I'm going to say this to you. If you are upset with who I am now, can I give you a warning label? When God gets through with me, I shall come forth as pure gold. The expression that comes to mind is I love you, but I'm not in love with you. Or you heard this one, it's not you, it's me. So they only loved the dimension of you that they had been exposed to. And then when they understand other elements to who it is that you are, then it is that they become intimidated. So they are enamored by you being cute, having a shape, having a figure, having a car, and having money, but they were not prepared for you having a mind. So, so when you begin to think out loud, I can't hear nobody, then they begin to try to put you down and they're not putting you in your place. They're trying to shrink you down to their size. Hallelujah. They can't understand why you think, why you want to have meaningful dialogues and critical conversations, why you explore territories that are not yet explored, that why it is that you want to go places other people haven't gone, why it is that you want to try things that nobody else has ever done because there is something different in your DNA that I am in the world but I'm not of the world I can't hear nobody and see a whole lot of people who don't understand you don't understand there's a David banner in me you won't like me if I'm angry hallelujah I try to be nice but if you push me all the way there you gonna see a person you didn't even know existed can I talk to some real people I love God I quote scripture I listen to gospel music in the morning but in the back of me is a few little cuss words and I'm trying to suppress that but you keep trying to make another dimension of me come out <laughs> so you have to be on guard you have to be on guard and activate your ADT alarm system for people who profess, hear this, to love you who have not gotten to know you. You can't love me too soon. Tell them, hold that. 
God, I can't hear nobody. It sounds good, and I know weaker-minded women would fall for that, but I don't want you to tell me what you think I want to hear. Don't say it until you can stand by it, and when you can stand by it, you'll be able to live through it. When Job lost everything, his wife admonished him, curse God and die. He responded back to Mrs. Job, why can't the same God that give takes away? That's because Mrs. Job only thought that the only thing that God does was increase and didn't know that I also serve a God that subtracts. If in fact you're going to be a Christian, you have to stop doing this cotton candy gospel of thinking that every time you worship, there's going to be a harvest, an overflow, and an increase. That's just one dimension of God. But when you really know God, you're going to understand there are going to be some years where, notice I didn't say days, there will be some years where you're not sure how you're going to make it. Your ancestors said, working from can't see to can't see there. There'll be some difficult moments where you got to be by yourself. That There'll be some seasons where you hate your job, your co-workers, your paycheck, and the Negroes that live in your house. But after you come through that, you'll be able to say through it all I learned to trust in Jesus through it all I learned to trust in God I don't want to be around saints that only know one dimension of him but I need some saints around me that understand if I suffer with him then I reign with him I need some saints that no weeping may endure for a night but joy comes in the morning I only need three or four people that know out of experience he may not come when I want him to come but he's an on time God when Jesus I talked about at 730 when Jesus walking on the on the water the disciples thought they had seen a ghost simply because they didn't recognize him in a storm they had only seen him on mountains, hills, and valleys, but they had never seen him go through something that could have swallowed him whole. I'm going to say to you, please, ladies and gentlemen, don't fall in love with anybody who's not prepared to see you walk through a storm. Hallelujah. Y'all just missed what I just said. If they can only love you when you look like a Mac counter, if they can only love you, watch this, when you balling out of control, it ain't going to last, boo. But if you can find somebody that'll love you when you still got sleep in your eye, when you need to swish around some Listerine, when, when your hair ain't dead, when your wig is crooked, when your shoes are run over, when there's a run in your stocking, and they still look at you and say, you are the bomb doc car that's when you found somebody that loves you when you're walking through your storm Jesus tried to warn us about himself and in warning us about himself he said my ways are not like your ways my thoughts are not like your thoughts but I still love you but you look at your neighbor and tell them it ain't a whole lot of people like me a whole lot of people don't think like me and a whole lot of people won't say what I say so it takes somebody special to love me hallelujah the last three people you were with before me were prepping you for the real fan you, you ought to be thanking God that God served your life long enough for you to meet somebody as genuine real authentic and bona fide as me look at your neighbor telling me when you look for my name in the book of life it is a blue check cuz I'm verified I'm verified because God knows he can trust me even when I go through a star would you shake that neighbor's hand tell him I'm verified I learned how to bless God when I had no money in my pocket. I'm verified. I loved him with my whole heart when I had nobody who loved me at home. I'm verified. I come to church when it's rain, when it's snowing, and when it's sunny outside. I'm verified. I'm verified because I learned how to love him when I'm up and when I'm down. I'm verified because I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth 
those of y'all that are standing rock with me would you do me a favor please will you just give God glory just for loving you even with all of your facets all of your dimensions all of your shifts all of your changes I still love God In Matthew chapter 16, the church leaders came to Jesus. Be seated, please. In Matthew chapter 16, the church leaders came to Jesus looking for a sign. They came looking for a sign because people, I want you to please have this, it's going to bless your life. People who don't know you always want you to prove yourself. Did y'all hear what I just said? I said, people that don't know you always want you to prove yourself. But you have to, in fact, operate under the conviction, I am not auditioning for a role I already have. God, 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 I can't hear nobody in here. I, I, I'll never forget when I went to uh, Whitney Houston's funeral. Uh, Kevin Costner came up to give uh, uh, reflections during that funeral. Uh, we were in New Jersey, and Kevin Costner said Whitney Houston was uh, nervous about auditioning for the body guard because she had never acted before, never been in a movie before. And Kevin Costner said, I, I took her through the screen tests. Uh, but what Whitney didn't know is she already had the role. I had never seen her act. I had never seen her in a movie. She had never been in a play. But because the gift in her was so real, I knew she could have it whether she could read it or not. And I need 500 of y'all ought to be shouting right now because God told me to tell you the role is already yours. You ain't got a position. You ain't got to play games. You ain't got to act like nothing for somebody else. God said, I got you right in this position because you've been faithful over a few things. I'm getting ready to make you ruler over many. Some of y'all are shouting over cars, clothes, and money, but I need 800 of y'all to shout why? For the role you getting ready to play for the position you getting ready to hold out on for the act that you getting ready to do God's got something amazing for your life they wanted him to prove himself and Jesus got away from those strangers that didn't know him he talked to his inner circle Talk to his friends, we know him as disciples, and he asked to them, who do people say that I am? And they said, watch this, Jesus, some people say you John the Baptist. Other people saying you Elijah, others saying you Jeremiah, other people saying you just one of the prophets. I want you to understand because of the complexity of who it is that you are, people can't agree on who you are. God, I can't hear nobody. So there's so many different opinions about you and none of them are true. The old black woman in the civil rights movement, Fannie Lou Hamer said, it is not what you're called, it's what you ask, answer to. Hallelujah, you gotta make up in your mind. It don't matter what none of these Negroes think about me because I know who I am. I am the head and not the tail. I, I am above and not beneath. Is there anybody that knows I'm a lender and not a borrower would you lay hands on yourself say I know who I am I am the chosen seed of Abraham I am God's favorite child I, I will have more than enough I know who I am I may not be your cup of tea but somebody likes coffee I'm so thankful that I know who I am says after I talk to all of them and you tell me what other people say I gotta ask a critical question because you roll with me you've been eating with me you've been traveling with me hallelujah we've been sleeping together uh, we've been seeing miracles happen for the last three years and now I gotta ask you something because I ain't never asked you this before Jesus didn't ask him do you love me he wanted to know who do you think I am and I'm telling y'all this week, you got to recalibrate some relationships and friendships and ask some people, who do you think I 
am. I am not your mama. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. I am not your maid. I am not your Uber driver. You, If you don't recognize who I am by now, then you need to go to the want ads. I can't hear nobody. He asked of them, who do you say that I am? He asked all 12, but only one of them answered. Can I say to you, you can be surrounded by a whole lot of people, but it ain't that many people that really know you. You got a lot of associates, but not that many friends. I need you to elbow your neighbor and say, don't feel bad. Most people don't get me. Most people don't understand who I am, and that's why I spend a whole lot of time by myself. And because you see me by myself, it don't mean I'm lonely. It don't mean I'm depressed. It don't mean I'm thirsty. It means I'm satisfied with me. And I am comfortable in my own skin. Who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter said, you are the Christ. You are the son of the living God. Y'all, I got to get out of here. And Jesus then focuses his attention on Simon Peter and says, because you know who I am, you are going to be blessed. Y'all don't know when to shout. God says, I'm getting ready to bless people that understand who you really are and love you anyway. Hallelujah. Can you love me even while I'm flawed? Even while I'm broken and halfway crazy? Can you love me anyway? I need you to grab that neighbor by the hand. Sean, I feel like having church. I said, grab that neighbor by the hand and say, once you know me, you may not love me, but I serve a God that loves me in spite of me he looks beyond all of my faults and he sees me at my knees the old songwriter said I don't know why Jesus loves me I don't know why he care I don't know why he sacrificed his life but I'm so glad I'm so glad he did he said Simon Peter because you know who I am I'm getting ready to bless you and I'm blessing you not with a house not with a million dollars not with a new job but I'm blessing you with a set of keys and the keys I'm giving you you don't even understand they not gonna get you in the Wells Fargo it ain't gonna get you in the meet you it ain't gonna get you in the Bank of America but the keys I'm giving you whatsoever you loose in heaven shall be loose in the earth and whatsoever you bind in the earth shall be bound in heaven I need you to give your neighbor a hand and say neighbor he loved me to give me the keys I can't hear no money in here I was taking my daughters home and we got to the house I said which one of y'all got the key grace is the oldest angel and a door are the twins and the door is the baby of the twins and I said which one of y'all got the key Cause mama ain't home And the door said I got the key I said how do you have the key And you're the youngest And she said because I'm the only one That won't lose Is that mama knows That if she gives me the key I'm gonna hold on to it Grace will leave it in the locker Angel will leave it in the desk But if I get the key I'll open up the door and I came to tell somebody the reason why he trusts me is because he knows I'm going to use the key. What you going to use the key for? Whatsoever I loose in heaven shall be loosed in the earth. Is there anybody here that needs something from heaven? He said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and seek my face 
and turn from their wicked ways I'll hear from heaven and I'll heal the land which y'all shouting for because whenever I prayed 